ready for an experience that you won't ever forget. Oh, come on, stand on your feet and give God a great big hand praise today. We're here to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Why don't you just wave at somebody around you right now and tell them how glad you are to see them today. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We're going to rejoice in it. The psalmist said, I was so glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you ready for church today? Yeah. Are you ready for church? Oh, I see there are some people out there that's not ready for church. Are you ready? Yeah, I know you've come to church, but are you ready for church? Are you ready to get your praise on? Are you ready to get your shout on? Can somebody give a shout unto the Lord? I've come here to get my praise on, my shout on. I've come here to say, thank you, Lord. You brought me for, from a mighty long ways and another week. And I'm so glad about it. We're so glad to have those of you who are looking at us online. Thank you for joining us today. We hope that you just don't come and sit and look and uh, uh, kind of spectate what we're doing here at the Mount Zion Church. But rather, we want you to experience it right where you are. When we start to shout it, we want you to shout. When we start to say amen, you just go and say amen whenever you want to. When we start to ask you to pray, we want you to pray out loud right there at your house or wherever you are. We want you to join in worship. The Bible says it doesn't matter which mountain you're on, whether it's on this mountain or the mountain that you're sitting at right now. The Bible says it's more important. They that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. It doesn't matter about the place. We thank all of you who are still coming to us, sitting in your cars and worshiping God. You can turn that automobile into a sanctuary because you are inside of that particular place. The Bible says we are the temple of the Lord. Say temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord. God dwells on the inside of us. So when you walked in, church walked in with us, with you. Let's bow our heads in the word of thanks unto God and ask God to get all into this marvelous worship uh, experience, even into these who are going to sing, not by themselves, but they're going to sing with you. And we're gathering today to thank God. Eternal Father, we thank you for allowing us to be in this church. We thank you for all of the worshipers who said, listen, it's summertime, but I'm not off for summer because you reminded us to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy. We thank you for all of our friends who are looking at us online and those who are sitting in their car in the parking lot right now. We thank you, God, for being so good to us. Now, God, we want to feel the precious spirit that is already inside of us. So give us what we need to say to these who are here today that God loved them so much. Give our choir the kind of singing and voices that they are being surprised that is coming out of them, even the orchestra today. Bless those who are welcoming people inside and outside of the church. In Jesus' name we pray. And all of the people said amen. Come on, give God a great big shout of praise and let's worship God together.
giving some praise in the house. He reigns today. Everywhere. How many know that the Lord is mighty? I said he's mighty. Yes, he is.
before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords because you're mighty. What a mighty God we serve. All stand on your feet and give God a great big hand praise. What a mighty God we serve. God we serve angels bow, bow before, before the mighty the mighty God we serve what a mighty what a mighty 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 mighty, 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 mighty God Some of y'all don't believe that. You, you come here to spectate and to look. But, but the Bible says, just play that a little. But the Bible says, let the redeem of the Lord say so. Is, is God mighty in your life? Come on, somebody. Is God mighty? Has God done anything powerful in your life? I just want you to bow your heads this morning and just think about one thing that God did for you that was mighty. I'm talking about this was a super ordinary kind of a thing. You went to him and you asked him for a certain kind of a thing and he gave it to you. Just play mighty God we serve. Yes, you went and you asked him for something and, 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 and you really needed this. This was not the kind of thing that you say, well, God, thank you for the food on my table. No, no. This is something really, really mighty. How many of you remember anything that God has done that was really, really mighty? Lift your hand up in the air and say, hey! hey. Now, now, if you don't have your hand lifted up, I'm going to pray for you. Because you woke up this morning, and I guarantee you that was a mighty act of God. You don't believe God's mighty. Sister Griffith, is God mighty? What were we facing with you a few years ago when you kept coming to me every, every Sunday? What, what, what happened there? What, I came to this whole church every Sunday, and my pastor had y'all pray for me. I have been, my kid is right here. I haven't had any problems out of it. None. Since February 13, 2013, I don't care how many times I go in the hospital, this is always okay. And I thank this church. I don't know how I try to tell everybody I see how much I thank them. And I do. And I know it's because of each and every one of you. And our God, our God, our God, I will never turn on him because he has proved to me how mighty he is. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give God a great big hand praise. Now, that was her testimony. Say, say, Sister Griffith. Say, Sister Griffith. That was your testimony. But I want you to know that he had just done something for you. Say, he's done some things for me as well. Now, here's what I want you to do. If you have somebody next to you I want you to take them by the hand if they are, if you're familiar with them and you're comfortable, take them by the hand, take them by both of the hands. Man, man, one, one, don't matter, both of the hands. I want you to tell the person next to you what God did for you. What was that mighty thing he did for you? Come on, tell them now. Don't make up nothing. He wants you to tell them. Now, if you don't tell them about it, then when you go back to him the next time for something, he's going to say, well, you wouldn't talk about it the first time. So I'm not going to give you it. A second time unless you talk about what I did the first time. I want you to brag on God. Come on, everybody. Come on. Brag on God. Start the bragging on God. Come on. Out loud. Out loud. Don't, don't be soft about it. You need to tell them. You were sick and God healed your body. You had a kidney needed for years and God gave you a kidney. Yeah. You needed a job and God gave you a job. You wanted a house. God gave you a house. You needed a new car. The old one messed up and God gave that to you. You needed God to heal a family member. Here's what happened. I want you to tell them what happened. Now, here's what I want you to do. All of you heard the testimony, say amen. amen. 
Now I want you to take the person by the hand. Again, if you're familiar, you're comfortable. Now I want you to take the person by both hands. And what you heard from the other person, I want you to start to bow your head and thanking God for what he did for the other person. Okay? Take the person by the both hands. I, I know you don't want to touch nobody, but that's your problem. Ain't nobody touched you in the last four years. And you feel alienated because you ain't never been touched. If that's your spouse, you should be glad to grab their hands and tell them. And start praying for what you just heard for them. Start thanking God on their behalf. And I guarantee you, when you sow in somebody else's life, I guarantee you, God's going to come back and give you some wonder. A mighty, mighty God we serve. All right. Now look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many of you know God loves you? How many know Jesus loves you? How many of you really know Jesus loves you? All right, I want everybody to loosen hands right now. Stop the prayer for a moment. You can go back to it after in a minute. I want you to look at me. Say, Jesus loves me. Say, Jesus really. And do your hair like this. Love me. So I'm not joking. You might not believe it. But Jesus loves me. Say, there's some people who don't love me. And say, sometimes I don't even love myself. But all the time, Jesus loves me. Now I want you to read that on the screen. What does it say? All right, what does it say? Read it again. What does it say? I want you to read it again. Jesus loves who? Who loves you? Say it again. Read it on the screen now. Read it again on the screen. Now, how many of you are feeling it yet? Say it again like you're feeling his presence because I already got a little drunk myself right then. Say it, read it again. Say, read it again. Jesus, say it like you mean it. Now say it like it's going into your mind and your spirit. Read it. One more time. Anybody felt it? Did you feel it? I, I felt it. It, it. it went right through me. Jesus loves me. Hey, Jesus loves. Can you believe it? Jesus loves. God of heaven and earth loves me. Jesus who was here on earth, he loves me. Now take out your candy. All of you got some butterscotch candy. Take your candy out now. It's, 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 it's butterscotch. I love butterscotch candy. Some of you got the diet kind. That's kind I mean. It's, it's orange and it's round. It's got a beautiful color just like you got a beautiful color. Say, I got a beautiful color. Say, I got a beautiful color. And I'm talking about your actual color. Say, I got a beautiful color just like this piece of candy. And then say, I'm rounded out because I came to church just like this candy came to church. And say, I'm sweet. God wanted you to know you sweet. Now put that in your mouth. Mm -mm -mm. Oh man, I feel good. Jesus just loves me. He know I'm so sweet. I'm so kind. And I'm very important. And he loves me. Every day I wake up in the morning, he gets up and say, hey, Larry, how you doing this morning? I say, Jesus, I'm doing fine. I sit down and start reading my meditation. Jesus says, hey, I'm talking to you right now. How you doing? I say, I'm doing fine. Look at all that over there. Look at that there. Look at those relics. Look at those pictures. Look at that lamp. Look at that shade. Look at that couch. I'm, I'm doing fine. Got a refrigerator in my house? Hey, refrigerator. Now, you know you're good when you got a refrigerator. Y'all got refrigerators. I got a refrigerator. I got a stove. I got food in my refrigerator. I got a couch, I got a backyard, you know, a couple, couple chairs out there. You know, I got a car in my, in my garage. I'm doing all right because Jesus loves me. And I want you to never forget that. No matter what happens to you, Jesus loves you. There was a lady by the name of Whitney Houston. How many of y'all remember Whitney Houston? Just put a picture up there. Whitney Houston lost everything. She was hooked up on drugs. Someone said as early as 13, 14 years old, this girl was taking cocaine, some people have said, maybe 16, 17. And she lost everything at the end of her life. Nobody wanted to call her for concert because she had lost and deteriorated her voice. 
and she looked so frail as if she was a drug addict. And, 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 and she didn't have any money left. And nobody even wanted to hang around Whitney. Whitney used to accept for Bobby. Y'all remember Bobby? Bobby! She should have said, Bobby, leave me! But she didn't. But what she remembered, two days before she died, that's her picture. Two days before she died. And you know what she said two days before she died and what she sung? Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible. Hey, hey can y'all play that a minute? Watch her now. Yes. That's her two days before Jesus she, she died. Me. Oh, yes. Jesus. He loves me. Yes. Listen to her. Hallelujah, it tears. Good God, it tears me so. Yes, Jesus loves me. Can y'all sing that? Yes, Jesus. Close your eyes for one moment. Don't worship a minute. Just think about it. Yes. Everybody say that. Jesus loves me. Everybody in the church, just sing it. We used to sing it when we was kids. Yes, Jesus loves me. Say, Jesus loves you, neighbor. You can go to your seat. We're going to invite our kids out right now for their Sunday school. I mean, yes, their, their church school. Amen. All of our children, you are excused even right now. All of our student ministries are dismissed at this time. God. Kids K through 6 can exit to the right of the stage, and all middle and high school students can exit to the left of the stage. This year, we are renaming the entire youth ministry to Next Gen Youth. We are celebrating the 10-year anniversary of Children's All Church, children where we youth. aim to grow Our tomorrow's students. leaders to by classes. helping them make sense out of life by accepting Christ at an early age. Hey, it's Pastor Larry here. What a time we're having here at Mount Zion. And so we're looking forward to what's next. And I'm looking forward to Women's Sunday when we celebrate women in the church at both services. And then hold our annual luncheon with the First Ladies. Then in September, uh, we're going to make sure that you start to fall off right by joining a ministry or recommitting to a ministry group. Maybe you want to be an usher, sing in the choir, help with baptism, serve food at the food pantry, or be in our connect groups. Whatever it is that you like, let's make it happen. And we also are in the serving. We're going to pack some items for seniors in our senior care centers to put a smile on their face, and they love this when we do it every year. And we're going to do that on Serve Day Sunday coming very soon. Even our children and youth ministries are going to help out, and we're going to call that the Big Health Day. And you know what? I also care about your health, and I care about your well-being. So on Sunday, September 24th, our partners from the university hospitals are going to hold health screenings and have information tables on all you need regarding health and wellness. This is a new wellness center that's opening up in our community and they're gonna share with you all the things that, that they will be offering to help you in your journey to support your physical health. Also, lastly, don't forget that your spiritual health is what matters the most. Of course, coming to the church is one of the best ways to do that. Being at church, coming here, being in attendance, but also this year we wanna emphasize the importance of Bible study. 
And so I'll be starting Tuesday noon live Bible study on Tuesday, September 12th. And we'll be gathering consistently each week on a 12-week schedule that will be in your bulletin. However, we'll now be starting back up Mount Zion University. Yes, many of you have enrolled in Mount Zion University before. Hey, MZOVU man. is guided at home study with check-ins here at the church. And it's going to be a great 12-week journey through not only the Bible, but we're going to study together relevant topics that people are facing today. Our theme for this school year is going to be giving God your future and also God's answers for today's problems. So when you register for Mount Zion U, once completing the course, you're going to get a certificate and our official t-shirt and special yeah. gift. And yes, you have some options. There'll be three levels of study, scholar, champion, and believer, all based upon how much time you have on your schedule. And also, I just want to let you know, I can't wait to be with you on this journey of growth. So thank you, and God bless you. You can celebrate with us in three ways. One, invite friends to join us. Two, you can volunteer. And thirdly, as a part of our special summer offering campaign, you can give a special offering towards the Dream Center 2 project, which is a part of our three-year vision. We want to renovate the center to accommodate youth sports and adult activities centered around health and fitness. And also, we are asking everyone to take a godly pause at our prayer garden. Let's praise God that we were able to make substantial updates oh, to the grounds hand, of the prayer park with, with beautiful new shrubs, in the back. bushes, That's and park. maintenance. And thank Prayer God we were able to finish our parking lot project just in time. The church would like to thank all of the faithful givers of the Mount Zion ministry. We have now added an option to give tithes and offerings through Cash App. Simply go to your phone and put in MZOV Church. Lastly, don't forget this summer there is Bible study between services and we are now collecting school supplies for children going back to school this fall. Bring in book bags, notebooks, pencils, pens, and paper and other items as we will distribute to kids who need them most and also make them available to children at our church. Mount Zion, on the move for Christ. Amen. Give God a great big hand praise for what we're doing here at Mount Zion as you stand on your feet, getting ready to give back to God. Again, we hope you would mind for those marvelous ministries that we are doing here at Mount Zion Church. Uh, we also have a new ministry called Diaper Ministry. Say Diaper Ministry. And we are inviting you to purchase diapers for people, uh, mothers in particular, who cannot afford diapers and and uh, other kinds of items, but we're collecting diapers for women. Whether you know it or not, infant, more, infant uh, mortality rate is very high in the black community. And so babies are dying because parents and mothers cannot afford to take care of their children. So we want to make sure we start to at least let them know that we love them by providing diapers and also formula. Amen. Formula is so high, I don't know how some parents can survive off of uh, what they're paying on formula for children. Uh, and so we want you to join in with that. And also we're going to have a ministry expo on the second Sunday in uh, September. So you'll get to know all of our ministries here at the Mount Zion Church. And if you're not registered, go to the uh, welcome desk and register your ministry in for uh, the second week in uh, September. And you can have your own private ministry. We want to also share those also with people in the in the church. We're so glad to have uh, our good friend, our brother and sister who have been a member here at the Mount Zion Church for 2,000 years, ever since Jesus was here. And they have moved all over the country. And that's none other than uh, uh, Ron, uh, Ron, uh, Ronnie Duncans and Yvonne. Amen. Raise your hand, Ronnie. There he is. Amen. Ronnie, do me a favor here. I don't know if your wife would do it, but run on up on this stage here and then run on back so they'll see who you are. This is our newsman, Ronnie Duncan. He is always across the country. His daughter's up in New York City and she's into news. And uh, he's in Detroit, Michigan. Cleveland didn't have sense enough to keep him. And so he is in uh, Detroit now and they were going to Detroit. To, they said they're going to stop by their home church. The Mount Zion Church of Oakwood Village. Amen. Let's give them a great big hand. Amen. How many of you have your Bible? Lift them up or say amen. amen. How many of you have your paper Bible? Amen. You have your paper Bible? 
And we begin. Here's what I want you to re repeat, repeat after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I'll boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living, living seed of the word of God. I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you, Joe Osteen, for that. Pastor Larry, will you come? You are Joe Osteen, Jr. Amen. Let's give Pastor Larry a great big hallelujah. Amen, amen. Come on, give our pastor a great big hand clap one more time. Amen, amen. Blessing us on this morning. Let's go into the word of God as we go into Malachi 3, 6 through 12 and prepare for our giving time, even in the parking lot. Or if you're online, we thank you for participating with us in the tithe and in the offering. We know today that when you give, God gives you more than if you had kept everything to yourself. Do I got a blessed person in the house? Say amen. amen. God has been there for you. Somebody needs to say hallelujah. hallelujah. The Bible says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And you say? Your fathers, you have gone away from my orders and have not kept them. Turn unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye have cursed with the curse, but ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine pass through the thorn. Let's read 12 together. And all nations shall call you blessed. For ye shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. Let us bow our heads in a moment of thanks, in a moment of gratitude, thinking unto God, thanking God, not for what we don't have, but thanking God for what we do have. If you made it here safely, you need to thank God that you made it here safely. Oh, yes. If you woke up this morning, you ought to thank God for turning you on. I want to say also, if, if God... If you have a job, if you have some sort of income, you say, thank you, Lord, thank you. that I have a job yes. that I can produce income. Heavenly Father, we pray right now for all of those that are here today. We thank you again for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way. We thank you for the resources that we do have, God. We're blessed, God, because we follow you. We love you. We thank you. Bless the giver right now. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen, amen. and amen. Right now, you can come right now to the tithe and offering baskets. It's giving time here at Mount Zion.
all stand at the attention of God. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. church say amen. Amen. If you can remain seated, standing with me for one quick second as we go into the word of God just for the reading of God's word. If you have a Bible with you, say amen. amen. Ephesians chapter 3. If you have your Bible, smartphone, or something with the word of God, please go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 in the New Testament. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 20. If you have it, say amen. If you don't have it, say hold out a little while longer. I hear you. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. The Bible says this, and I'm going to read from the New International Version. If you would be so kind, can you repeat after me? It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Now as you're listening, I want to read the, the Living Bible translation. It says, Now glory be to God who by his mighty power at work within us is able to do far more than we can ever dare to ask and even dream of infinitely beyond our highest prayers, our highest desires, our highest thoughts, and our highest hopes. Oh, let me get one more translation. The Message Bible says, God can do anything. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God can do anything. You know far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does it not by pushing us around, but by working within us. His spirit deeply and gently within us. Oh, let me give you one more translation. The voice version says, Now to the God who can do so many awe-inspiring things, immeasurable things, things greater than we could ever ask for or imagine through the power that works in us. Bow your heads for a quick moment. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. Thank you for your power right now. We thank you for this place. We thank you for our gathering. One of the very most important gatherings of the week. I pray, God, that you would hide me behind your cross as we go into your word. Father, speak to our mind, our body, and our soul. Give us something that will carry us throughout our week. Bless the congregation. Bless the online congregation. Bless the parking lot right now by the sound of the honk of their horns. They're saying amen even on today. Thank you, God. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. You may be seated in God's house. You may be seated in God's house. If I can give you a, a subject for this morning. Is everybody doing all right? Just say all right. All right. I just want to make sure you guys are doing all right. I want to speak to you and preach to you from the subject of God is able. God is able. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor. God is able. 
You know, recently I was swimming with my youngest daughter, Lauren, the other week, and I recall as I was in the pool, she was standing by the edge of the pool and she was filled with excitement and anticipation and as she was looking to get into the water I was cheering her on I was saying Lauren get in the water however all of a sudden when I told her and I said Lauren get in the water her, her, her joy turned to fear all of a sudden her face and smile of joy and laughter and happiness it turned into a look of concern turned into a look of fear. She was no longer excited to jump in the water because now she was uneasy about the depths of the water and she was unsure if she had the ability to make it once she jumped in. However, as her father, knowing her potential and knowing her ability, if you will, I tried to reassure her. I tried to make her be comfortable in the fact that I was there to catch her once she jumped in the water. I yelled out to her. I said, Lauren, jump in. Take a leap. Daddy's got you. It's going to be okay. And after a period of time, Lauren gathered the courage to jump into the pool. And as soon as she hit the water, she began to float. She found out that she was buoyant, if you will, and she was supported not only by me, but she was supported by the water. And so after seeing that things were okay, she began to get excited. She began to paddle her arms and she began to kick her feet and kick her legs, realizing that everything was going to be all right. You know, when I think of this story, many of us are like my young daughter, Lauren, in the story. We stand at the edge of the pool, at the edge of our comfort zones, hesitant to take a leap. Hesitant to take a risk, hesitant to step into the unknown when at the same time the swimming pool represents the vast possibilities and potential that God has in store for our lives. Could it be that God is just waiting for you to jump into what he has better for your life? Could it be that just as my child discovered her ability to float and be okay as she jumped into the water, we too will experience God's supernatural power and God's supernatural guidance once we stop leaning on our own understanding and step out on our faith. Truth is, you may be surprised by the doors that open, the obstacles that are overcome, the people that you will encounter, and the blessings that will flow in your life after you surrender your doubt and fears and step out on faith in God. See, that's what Paul was writing in this text in Ephesians. He was talking to the church at Ephesus. He was showing them that we should not limit God by our limited thinking or our lack thereof. And see, when we trust in God's unlimited power, if you will, and believe that he can accomplish more than we can imagine, what are we doing? We position ourselves to be witnesses of his blessings in our lives. You know, I don't know about you, but I love to witness a blessing. I don't know about you, but I love good surprises. I love being helped right in the nick of time. Is there anybody in this place where God helped you right in the nick of time? Is there anybody where God blessed your life, where God healed your body right in the nick of time? And so I'm believing by the sound of my voice that somebody listening today is just a moment, just an obedient step away from being a witness of God's power, of being a witness to what God can do in your life. Now, what, now, now I want to tell you, he'll do things not what you expected. Not what you think he was going to do. By being a witness to the awesome power of God, it's unexplainable. It's unthinkable. It's unfathomable. It's nothing that you can create. Only God can do it. But before we can have a praise party, do I have any praise partiers in the house that love the power of God? Paul is telling us in the text that the precursor to all of this is that first, you got to believe. First, you got to believe. But yes, the first steps in your Ephesians 3.20 journey is to realize that God can do it. You got to realize that God can do it. I, I, I don't know who, who needs to hear this this morning, but I just want to speak into your spirit. God can do it. I, I don't know who's struggling with this, but I want to speak into your life and your situation, and I want to say God can do it. And see, the Bible puts it another way. The songwriter said, God 
is able. He said, I don't need you to look at your circumstances. He said, I don't need you to look at the challenge. I need you to realize, first of all, that I'm able. That I'm able to create something out of nothing. That I'm able to repair that which is broken. I want to proclaim today, he's able to deliver grace where you messed up. He's able to give mercy when you don't deserve it. He's able to give you strength to rise above the trials. He's, he's able, as the Bible says, to keep you from falling. He's able to comfort you when you got that bad news that you received. He's, he's able to get you to what's next. But you must always believe and know in your heart that he's able. I love what Paul says here in the text. He made it clear. He said he's able, but he said he's able to do more than you can ask and more than you can think. I want you to take a pause for a moment. Think about the biggest thing that you can ask for. I want you to pause for a moment. Think about the biggest thing that you need. Think about if you had no limitations what you would ask God for. This is what you should be thinking on a daily basis. Even more than that, what is God saying? God is saying, I'm able to do more than what you're thinking. He exceeds expectations according, as the Bible says, to the power that's working in us. Meaning, are you full of faith or are you full of fear? Can I teach for 10 seconds? He will exceed your expectations based on the power working in you. So here's the question I'm going to put on the screen. What power is working in you? Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. What power is working in you? Here's the problem. It's pretty simple. People are lacking the power because they're lacking the belief. Here's the question. Do you really believe? Do you really believe that God can heal your sicknesses? Do you really believe that God can cure diseases? Do you really believe that God can deliver us from our enemies? Do you really believe that God can meet your financial needs? Do you really believe that God can mend troubled marriages? Do you really believe that God can deliver wayward children? Do you really believe if you're a single person in the house, do you really believe that God can help you find your life partner? Do you really believe that you can prosper even when there's recession or economic downturn? Do you believe that God can skip over those, those, those things that, that are messing you up and, and just bless you and take you to what's next in your life? Do you believe that God can mend the broken pieces and put your life back together again? God says you got to believe it in order to receive it. Now, I love this. Let's have a Bible lesson again real quick. For all my note takers, if you're a note taker, say amen. amen. Ephesians 3.20. Now, this is going to be real easy, I promise you. Here's how you read the Bible for a breakthrough and to receive the revelation that you need for your life. When you read Scripture, I want you to always look for three things. I want you to look for the principle. I want you to look for the program, and I want you to look for the promise. We're going to put that on the screen. I want you to look for the principle. I want you to look for the promise. Excuse me, the program. And then I want you to look for the promise, the principle. What is the truth? What is the truth about that's coming to me? What is the truth that God is bringing forth in this text? What is the truth about God coming from this text? That's the principle, the program. How does God want me to work this principle in my life? Once I find out the principle, how do I work it into my life? That's the program. Then there's the promise. If you follow the principle and the program, what is the promise for my life? Now let's read this verse again, and we're going to place it on the screen. Ephesians 3.20, the New International Version. It says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. 
What's the principle that God wants me to know and believe? Here's the answer to that. He wants you to know that God is able to do. No matter what it is, no matter where you are, no matter how big the challenge is, no matter what the naysayers are saying, no matter what your neighbor is saying, God is able to do. He has the ability to make it possible. He has the power to see it through. He's able to bring money out of nowhere. He's able to change your job situation. He's able to help laws pass that we didn't think were going to pass. Hello, issue whatever somebody. Do, he's able to do things in our world that we thought weren't going to work. The text says the principle you must know is that God is able to do. Now let's exegete together. The text goes on to say he's able to do what? Exceedingly, abundantly, above all. I better throw that on the screen. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all. Now that's a lot. He could have just said I'm able to do all that you ask a thing. But he used more descriptives. He said this. Now to give you a quick lesson in the Greek, the translation of this text which speaks of the time of the writing, exceedingly, exceeding means over, above, and beyond. I like that. Oh, I can praise right there. Over, above, and beyond. Let me give you something that I want you to remember. Let's do this hand gesture. Uh, gesture. God is able to do exceedingly, meaning over, above, and beyond. Come on, somebody do it one more time. Over, above, and beyond. So the Greek word, that's, that's exceedingly, but then there's abundantly. You know what abundantly means? It means to go beyond. Which basically is saying the same thing twice. Above all that you can ask or think. Now what does that mean? It means if you can think it up, he can do more than that. If you can conjure it up in your mind, he can do further than that. But let me talk to my left brain people. My logical thinkers, my analytical thinkers, my I need to see something folk. Now some of us is asking, why hasn't this happened to me? I want to live the blessed life. I want to live that kind of life. Why haven't I experienced this abundantly, exceedingly above all I can ask or think? Well, here it is. It's because most people work the principle, but they don't work the program. Here's the program. The Bible says, according to the power that works in us. And we're going to put that on the screen. See, for the principle to work, what do you need? You need the program. See, there's a condition. It works according to the power that work, that working in us. It's able to be fulfilled according to the power that's working in us. It's able to come to pass according to the power that's working in us. Now, what does that mean? And I hope that's why you're here. I hope that's why you're listening because you can't reach God's best for your life unless the power of God is operating in you. See, that's the challenge in most people's lives. They got the power but they ain't got the Holy Ghost power. They got some power from somewhere, but they ain't got God's power. I remember about a decade ago in my earlier training, I was learning the power of faith healing and, and how to lay hands on people who were in need and, and who needed a healing from the Lord. And one of the first things that I learned is that you can't change anything. You can't touch any need. You can't fix anything without power. You know, truth is, everything needs power. You know, I was doing some work around the house the other day, and I was trying to put together some furniture, and, and I was using a screwdriver, and I was having the hardest time getting this thing together and getting the screw in. As strong as I was, I put so much muscle into it, it just would not budge. I was getting frustrated. I was fussing. My family was looking at me like I was crazy. And then all of a sudden, I read the directions. That of, course, that, of course, I failed to read at the beginning. And the first thing it said on the instructions was that in order to assemble this tool, we suggest you use a powered screwdriver. You see, the makers of this furniture knew that human power was not enough. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to. 
I don't know whose ear I'm whispering right now. But somebody needs to know that unless you got the power of God, it's just not going to work. Until you tap into the power of God, it's just not going to change. Some things can't be fixed without the power. I can't do it, but God can. I can't make it, but God can help me make it. Let me, re let me repeat, in this situation, in your situation, in your circumstance, there is a condition. The greatness of your potential works according to the power that is working in us. It's able to be fulfilled according to the power that's working in us. It's able to come to pass according to the power that is working in us. Paul is saying if you, if, if you want this able God, if you want this able God to exceed your expectations, if you want this able God to blow your mind, if you want this able to God to give you stuff that you never thought of, if you want this able God to do some things that you couldn't even think of, it will only happen if the power of God is operating in you. Now you should ask your neighbor what's working in you. Is it doubt? Is it flesh? Is it arrogance? Is it anxiety? Is it fear? Is it self-reliance? You can't let the wrong power run your life. The principle and the program can't function with the wrong power. This miracle can't happen with the wrong power. If you're tapped into the wrong power, the power of God won't flow through your life the way you need it to flow. If you look in the New Testament, even Jesus couldn't perform a miracle for people who had the wrong power power. One of the things that hindered people back then was unbelief. Unbelief is the wrong power. God said, I can't work this principle without the program. That's why you got to watch who you listen to. That's why you got to watch who you let in your ear. That's why you got to watch who you hang out with. That's why you got to watch who you give your time to. Because God's power flowing through you is at stake. Now somebody is thinking, Pastor Larry, what gives me the power? Let me give you some keys. Prayer to God gives you power. Prayer to God gives you power. Jesus said, cast your cares on me. Trade your weakness for my strength. And I will hear you. I will answer you. Here's another thing that gives you power. Studying the Bible gives you power. Wisdom. Instruction is given. Therefore, opening us to the power of of God's Word. What else gives you power? Faith and surrender works power in us. See, sometimes you gotta, uh, you gotta put it in your spirit. You just gotta say it out loud. I can't, but God can. I'm gonna surrender my, my, my plans for God's plans. God will then show me what He can do. Here's another thing that gives you power. Fellowship and community. It brings power to your life. Being around others is like being plugged into a power source. See, we're not just here in this sanctuary just to hang out and be here. I like all y'all, but I love the power that y'all bring. Come on, tell somebody, give me the power. Give me the power. There's power being generated in this place right now. When the choir was singing, there was power. When the pastor was speaking, there's power. There's power generated in this place. And see, sometimes, let me help you out. If you got a power problem, sometimes God is just trying to put you to the test. A quick prime example is Hezekiah in the Bible. The Word of God says that God withdrew, withdrew from him in order to test him, and he wanted to see what was really in his heart. See, God wanted to see what's, what kind of power source was Hezekiah really using. Hezekiah and God, they were really close. But, but at a crucial point in Hezekiah's life, God left him alone to see if he had the character to step to the next level. To see if he had the wherewithal for the blessing that could ensue. To show him, though, at the end of the day, to put him to the test. To show him that he was weak without God. And to prepare him for a greater responsibility. See, what I want you to learn today is that God can't promote you to, the, to your next level of purpose until he knows that you believe that he's able. 
until you believe that you know that he's able to do. What is he able to do? Somebody say, exceedingly. He's able to do exceeding over, over, above, and beyond. All that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. But here's the good news. When you follow the principle that God is able, and when you work the program, and when you tap into the right power, then I want to tell you today that God has no choice than to come through on his promise. God has no choice than to bless your life. Because at the end of the day, if you believe and you connect with the right power, the Bible says that God says, the promise is I will answer you. The promise is I will provide for you. The promise is I will give you peace. The promise is I will strengthen your life. The promise is I will be with you. The promise is I will provide a way out for you. Isn't it good to know that God can provide a way out for you in your life? If God be for you, who can be against you? I don't know about you, but I'm glad to proclaim today that God keeps his promise. If there's anybody in this place where God kept his promise for you, I want you to stand on your feet. I want you to give God some praise. He promised to fight for you. He promised to give you strength when you were weak. He promised to increase power in your life. He promised for those that wait on the Lord, those that put their hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar up with wings like an eagle. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. How many of you believe it today? Give God some praise. He promised that no weapons formed against you will prosper. No weapons formed against you will prevail. At the end of the day, just like my story in the beginning, when you jump into the principle, the program, and the promise of God, that's when the breakthrough is going to come your way. That's when the healing is going to come in your direction. That's when the deliverance will start to manifest in your life. Do you believe that God is able? Somebody said today, say God is able. Bow your heads with me right now as we're all already standing in God's house. Let's take this home. Here's the question. What if you lived your life as if God is able? What if you lived your life knowing and believing that God is able to heal you? What if you lived your life that God is able to repair your relationships? What if you lived your life knowing and believing that God was able to get you sober? What if you lived your life knowing and believing that God could bless you with a better job? What if you lived your life knowing and believing that God was able to help you recover? Here in this Ephesians 3.20 text, Paul wanted the church to know of God's ability. Sometimes we have not because we forget this verse. The verse says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Remember the principle? Execute the program? and believe that God will fulfill his promises for your life. Work on the power that is in you. And I'm telling you, everything is going to be all right. Yes, yes, everything. As all heads are bowed in this place, let's meditate on the word of God that we just experienced. I want to tell you, if you want to tap into God's ability to work in your life, the first thing that you must do is you've got to turn your life over to Christ. He's able. He's able to do things that you really need him to do in your life right now. And he's able to help you through your struggles, to you who are going through a rough moment. He's able 
He's able to bring you through. To you who don't know what's next and you don't understand what the future is going to bring, He's able to even bring you through what's next. For you who lost a loved one and don't know where to turn or where to go, I want to give you the inspiration that He's able. But most importantly, He's able to save you. A lot of us are worried about what we did in our past. He's able to erase the past and give you a glorious future. Now that you've heard the truth that he's able, I want you to know today that you need to tap into the power source of God. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, the power comes from doing this. It comes from turning your life over to Jesus Christ. I want to ask you the question, if you want to turn your life over to Jesus Christ, maybe you haven't done that. Maybe you haven't made that decision to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. I want you to do it today. I want you to say yes to Jesus Christ. I want you to turn your life over to him right now. And if you're here today, I want you to raise your hand if you want to turn your life over to Christ. If you're here today, just raise your hand right now. Just raise your hand. If you want to say yes to Jesus, I see a hand raised. I see another hand raised. Keep that hand raised up. If you want to turn your life over to Christ, keep that hand raised high. He wants to save your life right now. I want to tell you, he says, all you have to do is acknowledge me. All you have to do is say yes to me and ask me to be Lord and leader over your life. And I tell you, I'll help you with the next steps. I'll bring you to what you need. If you want to accept Christ into your life, I want to offer Christ to you. You can walk up right now. Don't be afraid to come. I just want to bring you in. I want to tell you more about Jesus. I want you to accept him in your life. You can walk up right now. Those that raise your hand, just walk up with me. I just want to pray with you for a moment. If you raise your hand here today, you can walk up right now and just say yes to Jesus. If you want to say yes, if you want to join the church, if you want to accept Christ into your life, you can come right now. The doors of my father's house are open and there's plenty of room. The song says he's able. Let's sing it together. He's able. Yes, come on, he's able. Hallelujah, he's able. He's able. He's able. Come on, God is able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. I know there's a few people that raise their hand. Maybe you have a spirit of apprehension to come forward. It's okay. I want you to raise your hand one more time. I just want to pray a special prayer. If you raise your hand, just raise it one more time. I'm not going to call you out. I just want you to raise your hand if you want to accept Jesus into your life right now. If you want to accept him into your life. Every head is bowed. I want to pray this prayer with you, and we're going to pray it all together. Will everyone repeat after me? Say, Dear Jesus, I accept you into my life. I ask you to be Lord and leader over my life. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. You rose from the grave, and I'm asking you right now to lead me every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some praise for those that have raised hands. Listen, to you who raised your hands, I want you to fill out that card in the pew. I want to give you the option to fill out the card in the pew, and you can put it at the receptacle at the door, or go to the Connect Desk, and I want to have you fill out that card and give it to the Connect Desk, and we want to give you the next steps. Give God some praise for these that raised their hands even on this Sunday morning. Let's go to God in a word of prayer. We're thankful to God for his blessings, and we know that he can do exceedingly above all that we can ask or think. Heavenly Father, we thank you for you being an able God. We thank you for your love that's unending. We ask today, God, that you would bless us today as we go out. Thank you, God, for a wonderful worship experience. We love you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Come on, give God some praise today and consider yourselves dismissed. Melodies from heaven. Yes.